Last night I shared a thought. Uh, we had one of our members from uh, Richmond, Edel Seaman Shasta. I shared a thought there for our motion, and I think it's very appropriate uh, uh, right now as too on the uh, famous pasuk which uh, we're familiar with, Nasev Nishma, at uh, the end of Mishpatim coming up this week, uh, when Bnei Yisrael is makabel the Torah, he said to Kadosh Baruch Nasev will do Nishma and we will listen, and the question that uh, that is asked in our motion particularly is the question you know, what do you mean we'll listen if, if you're going to do uh, of course you're going to listen how can you do without listening and and if you're going to if you say to Kodesh Baruch Hu, uh, Hashem whatever you tell us we'll do you, you need more than that Nasa should be enough Hashem any mitzvah give us Nasa we will do so what's the Venishma uh, we have to hear it anyways so what's the Venishma so Moshe gave a very nice explanation Moshe said that um, uh, at times Shema doesn't mean to hear it's not a something to hear with with your ears but shema frequently means to understand uh like a lot of times even in english we say do you hear me well i mean say do you understand what i'm saying well and in particular we see the the pasuk of shema yisrael as the measures explains that when yaakov, yaakov wasn't sure if all his children were committed uh to the concept of hashem and they said shema yisrael not here but understand our father yisrael hashem okay we really understand hashem okay hashem Echad. So Shema really has a meaning to understand what's being said. So Moshe said that was the shvach, the shavach that Bnei Israel is given because they said to Kadosh Baruch Hu, of course we're going to do what you tell us. <laughs> after after, after Kriyas Yamsuf, we're not going to do what you tell us. But the Nishma, we want to understand every mitzvah. We won't be happy enough if we just hear the mitzvahs, if we just uh, do the mitzvahs. We won't be satisfied if we just do the mitzvahs. We won't be satisfied until we understand every single mitzvah and every mitzvah that we that we do. We're going to learn the through the sugya, through all the concepts, all the ideas, all the mishonim, all the halachas, and everything. Then, when we fully get a full comprehension of the mitzvahs, then we really appreciate doing it. So, I, I think we are very fortunate this evening to have a um, very close acquaintance uh, of, uh, of of I should say not only of myself but of the family, uh, my brother and, and the shiva. Uh, Meyer, who really uh, personifies this concept that uh, that doing a mitzvah is really just a beginning step, but it's really not not complete until we have full comprehension, until we really understand the 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 in depth, the insight, all the intricacies of the mitzvah. So it's really a very uh, big honor and a cover to hear Meyer address the our our group this evening. My cover to be here. It's, uh, I feel much like a homecoming. Back in the Rockaway days, back when I came to visit Mechmash, I think it was about 20 years ago. Right. Tour with you uh, 12 years ago. Tour with Shmuel David in uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh a few years back. So Baruch Hashem. Strong, strong connection. Amazing support to be here. I'm not sure of the usual format of this shirim here, but uh, to me, uh, I am not a lecturer. The shear here, please give and take. So make sure you ask any questions that you have, so it could be a lively discussion. I get to meet you, uh, fellas, once in the year, and who knows we'll ever meet again. So I want to have a shear that's going to have an impact. I hope for your life. So the topic I chose was tefillah. Chazal already told us two thousand years ago. That to have kavana and tefillah and to get it right, it's a rare phenomena. Rare phenomena. So I thought I'd like to share a couple of insights into tefillah. I think there's something very, very unique in tefillah we do not have by any other mitzvah. I'd like to go through a few different examples. And I hope as we progress, you'll see there's something that does not fit in with other mitzvot. I hope you pick it up. Okay? So... We're going to look through some scattered sources. Number one, the mission Bikurim. So it says, it's the very beginning of Bikurim. Yeish bim Bikurim Bikurim. You have the mitzvah of Bikurim, and we bring the first fruits to Shalayim. And then there's a whole paragraph that we say. So there are those that say the paragraph, and those that do not say the paragraph. So in Mishnah Dalid, Elu Mivi'in Velo Koran, there are those that bring, but they don't read. They don't say the paragraph. 
Hager may be veina kore. So the ger, the convert, he brings, but he doesn't say the paragraph. Sheinu yacholomar what? Because he cannot say the words. Hashem nishpa Hashem lavoteinu latet lanu. Because he cannot go ahead and say which words. Thank you, Hashem, the land that you've given, that you've promised to my forefathers. He just can't say those words because it's not his forefathers. So he has to bring the mitzvah, he has to bring the Bikurim, the first fruit. It's a wonderful zuchut that he has, but he just cannot say those words. So he has to leave it out. He still gets the mitzvah, of course, but not the reading of the paragraph. Okay? The Rambam on the side says, it's the number two over there on the right side, Kozim Mavuar. Ella says, it's clear what the Mishnah is saying, but the Psak Halacha may be Hager Atzmo. He does bring Bikurim, the Kore. How? How does he bring the Bikurim? The Mishnah sounds accurate. He can't say the words. He can bring Bikurim, but he cannot say those words about my forefathers. They're not his forefathers. So how does he say it? Because God said to Avraham that you can be the forefather of all the nations. But now you're the father of everyone. And because you're the father of everyone, So every girl can say that, yes, Hashem, we're here in the land that you promised to our forefathers. Because he taught everyone emunah, and therefore he's the father of everyone. Says Machloke, whether a ger can say this paragraph, and the Ram says we hold that he can, because Avam Mongoyim, the ger can say my forefather Avram. Any questions on that? You hear the Machloke? It's just based on the pasuk, then, no? Not just clarifying, so the. Yeah, so based the on the pasuk, Hashem Nishpa LaHashem Avoteinu, with that he that. The pilgrim has to say as he comes to the Megdash, he has to say that Pasuk. So the question is, can he say it or not? The Mishnah says not, the Ram says no, the other sources that say yes, and that's how we hold. Okay. okay? Now what's what the Machloka? Okay. Why, why, why doesn't the Mishnah hold that Pasuk? Ah, Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question deserves a good answer. Even a greater answer, actually. So what do you say? What's the Machloka here? And then we can ex- see why the Mishnah didn't seem told by that Pasuk. So what do you think the argument is? And just to strengthen the issue here, before we analyze the, 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 the machloket here, why don't we go on to another source? This is Im Yitz Hashem, from here of Yamin. This is going to be Halach Lamaisa. We're going to have the Migdash back soon, hopefully before you guys leave. And will this be a real Halacha case? Right now it's a beautiful Lamdasha case. But let's see a real Halacha case that comes up. Look at the next paragraph, and then we'll analyze it all together. Three. This is Shulchan Aruch. Yutet. And uh, some say a ger cannot be a shatz. He can't be the chazan. Why? But we don't hold that way. We let a ger. He can be a chazan. Okay, then he gets into who can uh, hold back from uh, <coughs> opposing a chazan. Fine. Now, do we hold that way? That a ger cannot be a chazan? We don't hold that way. A ger can be a chazan. Why? So the Mishmurah says, Mem Ted and Mishmurah on the bottom, number four there. He can't say avotenu. He can't say my forefathers. This is similar to the Mishnah, right? Aval Paulo So what should he say? Forget about being a chazan. What does he say when he davens? What should he say when he davens? Yomer avot Yisrael. because now he's Jewish, but he can't say avotenu, my forefather. But rather, what does he say? Elokei avot Yisrael. Bless you, Hashem, the God of the fathers of the Jewish people. That's the first opinion of the Shulchan Aruch. But we reject it. Why? We reject it. Why do Yacholomar Gamkein Elokei Avotenu? He also could say, and what reason does he bring in? Same like whom? Rambam. Okay? Same machlokets. This is already ma'asim b'chol yom. This is not just a question of a ger in the Migdash. This is a ger, and not just a ger, as a chazin. A ger, every time he davens, what does he say? Brot Hashem, elokeinu, he says, because he's now part of the Jewish nation, that's fine. Elokei avoteinu, or elokei avot Yisrael. 
And the first opinion Zeronov says, yes, I have to Israel. And the second opinion says, no, 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 he could say because Avatinu, he is his father, because Avamon Goyen. So now we're analyzing the Machloket both in the Mishnah, in the Rambam there, and in the Shulchan Aruch, and he brings down both sides. Okay? So what, what's the argument? What do you think? What would be the Svar of each side? Any thoughts? Yes. What is your name? RL. Okay, all right. What do you think? I think the Svar for the Rambam is that he or he converted to he converted to uh, Judaism, so he he's Jewish. It's, I mean, like yes. So so he, um, so technically, um, Abraham and Yisrael Yaakov are the four, are his forefathers, no matter what. I mean, he's Jewish. That's it. Okay, and but, but the fact is, so how do you define forefathers? Let's ask you that. How do you define forefathers? Your religion. I mean, your. Yeah. So once you are religious, then these are your forefathers. Okay. For, and what is the other side? What nation you're on? What? What nation you're on? That's right. Now. Okay. And what would the other side say? That that um that you were born not in the right nation, so so they're not your forefathers. So even though right now you're on a high level, you're get said there, you are on the highest of levels, but just he's not your forefather. But can we clarify what does forefather mean? And if, once you realize there's two clear ways to define forefather. Everyone here come from America? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Mahatma. Well, not to compare that with Sugya, but they are in America, they are the what? Forefathers. Founding uh, fathers. Yeah. So does that mean if you trace your DNA back, it's going to come back to Jefferson and Washington? I, I hope not. But yet, all Americans look up to them as the founding fathers, right? So, so what does that mean? So what's the answer? So what does a founding father mean? It's, the it's not a lineage. It's nothing to do with lineage. It's not a DNA issue. It's what? They represent the... They represent a certain what? Ideology. Ideology. Ideologically, they're my forefathers, right? Yeah. So not to compare the half deal, but a gear, he looks up to Avi and Yaakov as what? Forefather. These are my forefathers. Wait, but you mean forefather? You will do a DNA check. It's not, it won't match. Yes, I know it won't match. But it's an ideological father. While the Mishnah, the other side, is holding which way? And the first sheet in the Shulchan is holding that. Well, when you yeah. talk about forefather, what do you mean? Actual. Yeah, the biological That's father. Wait, wait, what okay. does it make? What difference does what make? If it's your forefathers or not. Well, you have to define father. If you have a text in the Tefillah El Avotenu, and you have a text in the Bikurim Avotenu, you need to define the term Avotenu. Why? So, well, 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 there's a mitzvah to say Avotenu. Is that that maybe the Gera shouldn't say that? Is that's, that what saying? that's what that first sheet is saying. Oh, then that Gary should not say it. Can't say it. Okay. Because his definition of father is a biological father. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So we have two understandings of the word father, the term father. Is it a biological father or what? An ideological father, okay? If you say biological father, the gear's on the highest of levels, but he just can't say a term that just doesn't apply. We happen to Paskin that what? It's ideological father, and therefore the gay or the pilgrim can go to the Migdash with his fruit and say that paragraph. And the gay also can daven regularly, and he can be the Hansen as well because he has the same text. If he has a different text, he's going to have a problem being the Hansen because the Hansen has to represent the Tzibor. Okay? So that's fine so far? So far. Good. Okay. Let's go on. And I'm waiting for a question on everything that we're going to see. But do you ask it? I'm not going to ask it. Yes. Okay. According to the Amr that says biological. Yes. What would the Gare's children say? Oh, what a great question. What a great question. Wow. It might depend on who he marries. Let's say he marries a woman, or it's a, she marries a husband, right, who is a biological Jew, right, from... Okay. So then it could be even that opinion would say, oh, that the child can trace his biological parents back. And if both are Garam? I would imagine that opinion would say not, but that's a great question. Yeah. Any thoughts? That's a nice question. It's a very sharp question. It's a good question, yeah. Well, it would, it would depend on how we define the fact that he's a guest, so it's Nikah that, that, he, that he came from another nation, so uh. he can't say it. I mean, so maybe so the next voice. generation, right. it's not he's, he's not a gear. He's a, so even though the idea is biologically, he's no better than his parent biologically, right. but it's only a gear 
They cannot do it. Stirin is tefillah. Right. Very interesting. Yeah, it's a nice question. Yeah, so it could be what the Rashi was saying that once you're not a gear anymore, even if the ta'am would mean that you shouldn't say it, hopefully you're not a gear. So that's it. Okay, it's a nice question. Yes. Doesn't a, a gear lose any family ties he had? Like, for example, you would not have uh, you, you, all laws of like Yichud would apply now, and you can't uh, like certain things. Apply. Well, Rav Moshe deals with whether he has an issa Yichud. Let's say a, a father and daughter convert. So they're not halachically be related. So Rav Moshe deals, do they have the Issa Yichud? That's, that's a fantastic shot. It's a simple shot. They have no relationship anymore, so it's just two strangers. You know what I'm saying? So why should it matter who his parents were? He should be considered as if he's... Like he could still say, I'm the same. Yeah, but his parents, according to the side that holds the biological side, that you need the positive attribute of having a biological father named Avraham Avinu, and he just don't have it. It's true you don't have any other father either. He's sort of lost, the, you know, in terms of the parent thing. You're right, but that's just the way it is, according to that side. Right. You, he, I mean, you call him up Ben Avram. Like when you call him to right. So ideologically, he's Ben Avram, but not not the biological father, according to that opinion. You hear? Okay. Yes. Just as far as what Yosef was saying, as far as the offspring of the gear, just to be masber, we see that it is bottled to a certain extent as far as Yuxin is concerned. Because once you're done with the first generation of gear, they're kasha for Ghana now to marry. Right, it's true. So you see, that's true. Right. I hear, I hear. Okay, very good. Very good. So now let's go on. Okay, and we're still waiting for a big question here. Number five. A woman should not say Brit Have any of you ever heard such a thing? Yeah. Yes. That woman? Yes? Sorry them have a special benching for ladies. And a woman do not say Brit Hashanah Yes. There's such a text like this. Yeah. If they have the call Shushan Sardi, call uh, um, call uh, Shushan Sardi. With the way this line is out. Yeah. Wow. We. Oui. But uh, as far as I know, our mothers and sisters say this line, right? So look at the Mishnah Bura, number six in the Mishnah Bura, the Nashim Lav. We do say it today. Because of the Torah that you gave over to the men and the bread you gave them, to the Okay? They also have a mitzvah to learn. Okay? They have a mitzvah to learn the halachot. So they also are part of Torah. And bread, bread, to Klai Yisrael. So maybe I, a woman, don't have a bread. Mila, but the Klai Yisrael does, and the men do, and therefore somehow I'm connected to it. Okay? So once again, I'm achloket about the text. What is the text? And here, I'm very interested to hear that there are those that actually follow this Ramah. But the Mishra says, no, women do have the regular benching, because it does work out. Okay? And once again, the argument is over how do you understand those words? How literal are those words? If you're talking about a Brit, then I have no Brit law. Or maybe it's more universal, more nationalistic, not individual. And therefore, it's not individual Brit, my Brit. I don't have a Brit, so I can't say it. It was referring to the national Brit, and therefore I can't say it. Okay? Let's go on. Next one. Kuf Lamed in the Shulchan Aruch. Ribbonu Shalom Olam. Sh'omri B'Sha'at Nesiyat Kapayim. Man Dechazi Chalma. Person has a dream. Okay, this is the end of Gemara Bracha. It's so confusing. It's a weird dream. It's a bit of a mystery. Nehum Kamekane. He goes up in front of the Kohanim while they're Duchani. Bishasha Olam Duchan. Vene Machi. You know, he says, Ribbonu Shalom Olam. You ever see this in the Siddur? Okay, here in Israel, we do it every day, we sort of got so used to it, we don't really even do this, certainly don't do this every day, and even on Yom Tov, and many should don't even say it. Shalom, I am yours, my dreams are yours. And I finish as they're finishing their chant, okay? So when you have a bad dream, and you're just all confused, you're overwhelmed, so that's the time to bring it in front of Hashem, at the time of Hanuman blessing you. Now, of course, it's a beautiful sugi to analyze 
Maha Keshe, what's the connection? At the time of Kohanim, a blessing, that is the opportune time to talk about my dreams. Nice discussion, but not for now. So let's say, let's say, I go ahead and I'm in shul and I say Rosh Hashanah. Okay, and then I realize, wait a second, I didn't have any bad dreams. Baruch Hashem, I sleep well. I dream about all the Gemara that I'm learning during the day and all the the, the sugyot that I'm learning and how lucky I had to be learning in Eretz Israel. I don't have any bad dreams. I love the yeshiva. I only have good dreams. So should he say this or not? What do you think? Well, um, would, would it, wouldn't it say the reason, did it give a reason for why you should go in front of you when you have a bad dream? Or the reason for going now, to right now, the reason I'm going to hold off with that, you have to learn the Gemara and Brachot at the end there and the rush and to try to make sense of this whole connection. But he's saying when you have a dream, this is the time. So it doesn't seem to say anything between good or bad. It just be you have a dream. Well, it says a dream, and yeah. below, you don't understand it, it's yeah. bothering you. So that's a good question. What's the criteria for the kind of dream that you need to bring in front of Hashem? Okay, you're right. So that's a good point. That's a good point. It has to be something. It can't just be a regular dream. You had a dream about, you know, you go going ahead and you stop. So I mean, it's a dream. You're eating and yeshiva, having cornflakes for breakfast. Stop a dream. It means that it bothers you, okay? You don't understand it, right? Yeah. Okay, so listen to this Bir Halacha. The Bir Halacha, of course, is whom? The Chafetz Chaim. And here's what he writes in eight. If you didn't have a dream, a bad dream, or anything that's confusing, overwhelming, then don't say it. Okay, that makes sense. But the fact is, we only do it in Chutzlar, it's how often? A few times a year, right? So we say it. Why? Because it's only every few months. And chance on the last few months, what happened? You probably had some dream that bothered you. He must have the shekel, shkaz the yont of shani. Ooh, wait a second. So it's one thing I said last three, four months, I didn't say this prayer, this tefillah. So now it's the first day yont It's Sukkot, and I didn't say it for a long time. Okay, it's Pesach, I didn't say it for months and months. But wait a second. So he said, "The yont of shini ain lo maharibon mishalo chalam lo balayla shalafanav." Well, he said, "If you the second day yont if you already yesterday did what? Said the tefillah for your bad dreams in the last few months." Now chalos shalakosh harik va amar meyad mol ain shant. Okay, he says you already took care of the bad dreams. So therefore, now it's the second day yont if shavuos night. Well, you didn't have any dream. You were up all night, right? Or if you were sleeping during the night, you were dreaming about your cheesecake. It's a very beautiful dream. Okay? So you didn't have any bad dreams. So you have nothing to say about. So Master Shef says, don't say it. How are you going to go in and say it when it doesn't apply? I had a bad dream. What do you mean a bad dream? No, you didn't. And you already took care of your bad dreams yesterday. Then he says, the Bir Halacha adds in, Ha'olam e'nogim kein. Esher t'choshin shema ha'mochir alihem. Ah, because there's two parts to the tefillah. I had a bad dream, and also maybe others had a bad dream against me. So therefore, you discuss that. So that still can apply. Maybe people have bad dreams against you. You want to ask Hashem to help you out with that. V'yaf l'fizet. Now, this is the Bir Halacha. Listen to what he says. Lo yatchem ribon. Still, don't start from the beginning of ribon on the second day yontem. If you didn't have a bad dream that night. Why? How can you say, I had this bad dream. Ve'eni yodei amahu. I had this bad dream, I don't know what it was. Fuhu lo halam You didn't have any bad dreams. And you ready to get your bad dreams when? First day. First day. Ella, yat the Just skip over that line. Shu kochal matai. Skip over that first line. So the Mahabha said the Shak says, take the whole thing out. Don't say it. For the Bihala says, but the minute is we do say it on Yatav. He said, okay, fine. I can justify the first line, which talks about what? Oh, this having a bad dream against me, Hashem, make sure you don't let anything bad happen from that. Fine. But me, I had a bad dream. I, I can't say that line because what? I didn't have any bad dream. I've ordered that the last few months. I really took care of that yesterday. Does that make sense? The Be'er Halacha, yes or no? Any problems with the Be'er Halacha? Everyone's good with it? Yes. I mean, 
what, I'm saying, what about on your Kipper? I mean, like you say the Achets and whatever. Some, maybe something's on a potty. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's go on, okay? It's a great question. This is Yehavadat. Who's Yehavadat? Ravavadi Yosei. And the question they ask Ravavadi is that, you know what? On Tisha B'Av, what do we say in Shemona Esrei? Nachim, about that, that we're in such a veilut because of the tragedy of the Migdash and the destruction. Hey, Baruch Hashem, we're living back in Eretz Israel. We have Jewish sovereignty. We're building up the country again. We have to change around the tefillah a bit here. It just doesn't make sense anymore. So he says that what? In the uh, number 10. On where I underline, come up and say you the I want to be Artika Odam Harviv Shomami. Main to feel like you're Shalim Atika Deha Ligino Shal Yardane. The bottom line is in 48 there's plenty that was destroyed. And still there's things that are destroyed. So physically it is not built up yet. Eleven. We could go back to the Kotel. Say, yes, 67 brought us back to the Kotel. It was a great miracle and is what to be thankful for. It's a it's you know, the leftover from the Migdash. So the bottom line is, yes, we have the Kotel. It's a big Zichut, but it's still not built up. Physically, it's not built up. And jumping down next to him, and let's be honest, the Ruchni is also spiritually. He says, let's be honest, spiritually, you walk into Yerushalayim today, so you're just going to feel all, only spirituality and Ruchni and closest to Hashem. Hopefully, you'll feel that also. You're also going to feel plenty of other things. There's plenty of advertisements and there's plenty of shops in the Mamila Mall that aren't exactly covering the erva of the body. It's not a perfect spiritual place just yet. So Ravavadya says we still can use what term? We can talk about Yishalayim being destroyed in the state of Korva. It is not built up yet in Yetz Hashem Heri And therefore what? The language is still accurate. Don't change anything around. Okay? Any questions yet on all the things we've said? No? I'm going to continue. Um, so yes? How did he tell you to have Agmas Nefesh on Yadif? Well, what? The Kaktur of Herach. No, that's a cute one. I mean, if you say you go, you make Aliyah out of the Regal in order to have the Agmas Nefesh. It's, 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 it's a good question. It's a good question. Nice question. So then the Arach HaShulchan. And this is getting back to what you mentioned a few minutes ago. Are we just listing things that are that we... We would say them, but we don't really have a reason to say them. What we say them ain't say, still saying them? Ah, but in but each time we do have a reason to say, we would leave it out and we would change it unless we can make sense of it, right? Yeah. That's what we've seen consistently. Yeah, so and that's all good, right? Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Okay, life is good. Okay, I'm gonna ask one problem in a moment. Okay, Arab Hashul Hamadash changed these Zahir Beslichot Elu Vishel. Wait a second. You have to know if on slichos or during the session of tshuva or an el, if you're not fasting and the and the slichot talk about fasting, there's a bit of a problem there. Okay. You cannot say, oh, on this fast day, please accept my tefillahs. It's paha Monday, Thursday after the Yom You can't say, please accept my fast. You're not fasting. Okay. You can't be talking Shekht. So whenever it says Tane and you're not fasting, just say the Yom Tefillah, not Yom Tane. Right? Does that make sense? Of course it does. Then he says, and what about Slichos? A lot of times the quote of Allah We talk about getting up early in the morning. Hashem, I'm calling out to you in the early, early end of the night. Okay, and the old generation of four o'clock, a lot of the Spartan, the whole Elul, they're up four in the morning. But as we go on in the generations, we get a little bit older and weaker, lazier, and there's plenty of Slichot Minyan that are what time? 6.30, 7, 7.30, right? So Alpha Shabbat says, what do you do about those lines that talk about Ashmar Taboke, I got up early in the morning to call out to you, God? He says, what do you do with those lines? 
What do you do? Change it. Skip it. You, you can't say it. You can't say it. Just skip it. Delete. Okay? Delete it. Now, does that make sense? Does that make sense you should delete it or not? It doesn't, because oh. maybe there are people who do. Oh, no. You, uh, you, it goes by each minute. One morning, you're 4 o'clock with the Sephardic minion there, right? So when you're up with them, say it. Next morning, you're lazy, and you get up at 7.30. So let's leave it out that day, day by day. Does this make sense or not? Yeah. yeah. Seems sensible. Great. Listen to our Shlomo Zaman Orbach. Okay? Number 14. Hatevot Shachar Kamti. Shevviyat Aslicha, the Shachar Kamti. I got up early in the morning. Rashay Loman Avim Kam Lachalot HaShachar. Ooh, wow. But Shlomo Zaman says you could say it even if you got up a little bit later. What do you mean? Shachar Kamti? It's a lie. So the Vashlom was having to argue with this and said, yeah, lying, you know what? Tefillah is set. And you keep saying it because that's the way Tefillah is. Does he say that? No. What does he say? Number 15 in the footnotes. <speaking> in <Hebrew> you have to make sure you're not lying. <speaking in Hebrew> like the postkin mentioned. Okay, where he quotes the Archashulchan about the different lines that talk about getting up early in the morning. So he doesn't argue with this idea conceptually. In our case, when, what do you mean by these words, Shachar Kamti? Okay? It means that I got up early. So is he arguing with our Hashulchan conceptually? That just say whatever's in the sinner, don't change around the sinner. Is that what he's saying? Not at all. He's just saying semantics. The question of what, how you define the term Shachar Kanti. So Shachar Kanti, he takes it to mean what? I've gotten up early. But well, others might take it to mean li- objectively I've gotten up by Amr Shachar. So it's just a question of the details, how you understand that term. Just like we started off this year with what term? Avotainu. What does the term mean? Okay? It wasn't a big conceptual argument, just Mahlouk over the term, how you define the term. So what does Shachar mean? It's an objective man? Or when I got up relative to when I normally got up. I got up early. Okay? Fine. So that's what he held. The Aruch HaShulchan didn't hold that, right? Is that saying he reads it then? The Aruch HaShulchan, he, did he mention Shachar Kamti? He mentioned a few other terms that you leave out. Was that one that he would leave out? Because could be they would argue over the term. Or did he mention the term the Aruch HaShulchan? I think it says, not Shachar Kamti. Bezakam Okay, Leil and Shmuel Tabot that Hashem mentions. Okay, so and he just says in the note by 18, where I put 18 in, which is his note 13. We got up early than usual. Can't be they got up nine o'clock like you always get up. You have to get up earlier than usual. Do and therefore he holds the term Shachar is all right. Okay, one last case. Okay, Bitfila Yom Kippur. This is. Number tw- 19. Yom Kippur Katan. What's Yom Kippur Katan? Uh, Special tefillah said when? Erev? Uh, Rosh Chodesh. Yom, so some say it, some don't say it. Yom Alefnei Havidu Haggadav Kachi Arbeinu Nisim Omer Ribon Shalom. Don't say Ribon Shalom directly. And this is what Rav Nisim said. Why? So look at the footnote 20. Shalom Yehye Kedov Eshkarim. There's a lot of languages in that text on Erev Rosh Chodesh. It talks about all these terms. I'm crying in front of you. That's what you mentioned earlier. And, and you like talk about the highest level, how you're crying out in front of God. It's just not true. You're not. So therefore he says, that Rosh Hashanah says the best term would be and this is what Nisim said. Not that... I'm on this level that I'm crying out on this high, highest level, but rather what? This is what he's just quoting someone else, and then you're fine. Okay? So we've given about a half a dozen, six, seven examples of different areas of tefillah where there might even be a change of the text if it doesn't work out. So it seems to make sense. As Mr. Roth said, it makes sense. It's good. Right? I only have one question. One question. In all of Allah, in all of Allah, a classic example, I have a little minor headache, and it's on Shabbat now. Can I take an Advil? No. Why not? 
Why not? Because what? It fits his ear. Because it's Rafua. Why can't it have Rafua on Shabbos? Why? Medicine. I might grind the medicine, okay? And say, oh, I'm going to grind medicine. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get my head. I'm not going to grind medicine. I have no clue. Do you go to my yard and start taking the herbs from the... I'm not going to grind the medicine. But the obvious answer is two words. Low plug. Thank you. Low plug. And can I go ahead and climb a tree on Shabbat, yes or no? no. And the tree has no branches whatsoever. And can I ride a horse and there's no branches around at all? Again and again and again. The answer is going to be what? Low plug. Okay? That you have a lacha and you start going ahead and you start being flippant about the lacha. Well, in this case it doesn't apply. In this case it doesn't apply. What will happen to the halacha? In a matter of years or decades it will be over. Solomon Shechter 100 years ago. If you read a little bit about Solomon Shechter, he was, you know, the last Shechter schools around the States, okay? The conservative movement. So Solomon Shechter was pretty close to halachic Jew in the early years. But just a few things he opened up in that idea of Minag America. And certain things we do differently now. And he wasn't so set. He was a few issues he had, but one of them was he wasn't so set on the halacha. And then, and this doesn't apply over here, it doesn't apply over here. And in just one century, what happened? In one century, it's unbelievable. What happened? I have no doubt. Salam Shelter would come back today and say, oh my gosh, I, 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 there's, there's no at all semblance of similarity between what I started and what happened. Well, you opened up the Pandora's box and you just broke down the halachic system. So you need to have a system of halacha. And it can't just be flippant. Well, I know it. this doesn't apply now. This doesn't apply now. And, and, and yeah. Halacha, low plug, low plug. Ah, is it ever possible that a takana from 2,000 years ago, when we have the Sanhedrin again, is it possible that they could revisit it? Is that possible or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, there's certain times, and even then, you have to go to the Hilchot Mamrim and see which kind of rabbinic decrees a new baiting could say, yeah, this doesn't apply anymore, and which one's that? You have to look through that. But without that kind of authority, forget about it. And this is what preserves the halacha till this day, Baruch Hashem. And yet, what do we see example after example? I just gave you a few. We could go on and on with examples. We see that when it comes to davening. The Mishavur is ready to say, you know what, skip over that line, it doesn't apply. Oh, you're not getting up early in the morning? Who says, skip over that line. Oh, you're a woman? Yeah, take that out. Well, what happened to our concept? No plug. Just, just throw it out. No plug is out the door. You hear the question? But there's a beautiful answer. What's the answer? Why is Lot Plug out the door here? The post game already give the answer. What did they say again? In each case we said, what did the post game say here? You can't say this because it would be what? You can't say this because it would be what? It would be lying. It would be shek Yeah, but what about Lot Plug? What's the answer? When it comes to not riding a horse on Shabbat and not taking Advil, uh uh-oh, really, I have no clue how to make medicine. There's no way I'm going to come to Tokyo, and let's say that's the case. And therefore what? So by me abstaining from Advil, therefore what? So I have a lachic phenomenon now that was set up the reason it applies, it doesn't apply anymore. Who cares? It's a lachic reality now of an Isra Rafur. Go to the halachot and learn the sugyot. They're beautiful. And abstain from it unless you have more than just a headache. When you have a headache to take the medicine. And otherwise you have an iser. There's nothing there's a lie there. It's a beautiful logic world you can learn. But when I am dominating, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm talking to God. I'm having a dialogue with God. So God, I got up four in the morning. No, you didn't. He said the late 30. What are you talking about? And God, let me talk about my forefathers. They're not your forefathers. Oh, oh I hold that forefathers mean ideological. Oh, okay, good. That, so keep going. Talking, feel is not like any other mitzvah. Other mitzvah, you have the halachic phenomena, and now you have this isser, or you have the prohibition to climb up a tree. That's its own now world. Feel you talking to Hashem. When you're having a dialogue with Hashem in the post game, always have the sensors out. For what? <laughs> Emmet and Sheker. Having a dialogue with them has got to be Emmet. It's got to be truthful. And you cannot have a lie. And therefore, everybody doesn't just say, what kind of chutzpah are you asking? 
This is a tefillah. And then when we say the bitch is destroyed, you're trying to destroy it, we don't talk about it. No, no, no. I need to explain the accuracy of the words. And you're right. The alchets and all that, you need to explain and explore every one of those cases. And the more you explore, the more you're going to see the post can consistently are going to deal with this. And they're going to consistently work. All right, where's the emmet here? Because tefillah is not like anything else. Tefillah is a dollar with Hashem. It's not just a halachic maaseh, which the Tam and the halacha have two separate worlds to them. No. Dialogue has to be accurate. Okay, is that clear? Does that make sense? I hope so. So if we have, do you have a few more minutes? Yeah. Funny. Oh, Russia. So listen to this. If tefillah is dialogue with Hashem, and has different ramifications in other areas, it makes sense there's going to be another nafkabina that's going to come out. A crucial one. While other halacha is when I perform tefillin and sinsit and lulav, so let's say I'm sort of half asleep when I do it. So did I do the mitzvah or not? So then you get into the famous machlok at what? Mitzvot? Tzichot kavana, dini kavana or not? It's a big, big question. Okay, but we assume, even if you didn't consciously say, I'm putting on my tefillin for the sake of the mitzvah, which you should do. You should do. But even if you didn't, Mishmu wants to try to defend us by saying, why are you in the shul now putting on your tefillin? Why? Because you, 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 you're cold and this is going to warm you up. Why? Why are you doing it? If you ask them, why are you putting tefillin on? What's he going to answer? I want the mitzvah of tefillin. So I might not have thought of it consciously for the moment, but it's in the back of my mind. So, L'Chadchila, of course you should have in mind, I'm doing the mitzvah. I'm saying Shema for the sake of the mitzvah now. I'm putting I'm shaking the You should really do that. You should try to get into that framework. Because the Shulchan Aruch does lean towards the Psaq of mitzvot Yechot Kavanah. So you should try to do that. But if you didn't, Mishavu tries to make some def- to defend us in some way. But, when it comes to davening, what did you just say over the last three minutes? I don't know. As a matter of fact, now that I'm taking my three steps, I'm I'm wondering am I beginning to ask or am I finishing to ask? Let me try to remember. That's just a bad example and a bad joke. But sometimes it's, it's almost that bad, right? The Shulchan Aruch, the Gemara already had a similar case. Which case? Uchtavtam al mizuzot petach avisharecha, and then you're worried. Am I going to say vahaya now? Or am I going to say right? Vayomer? Where am I up to? So the joke for today would be that you don't even know you said Shmona Esri. It went pretty off with that, some of us, right? So this one is different. This is not like other that in the back of my mind I maybe could defend ourselves. Now, Shmona Esri, when you talk about Tefillah, we mean Shmona Esri. The Gemara talks about Tefillah, it means what? Shmona Esri. It makes very good sense that when you say Shmona Esri, you're talking to Hashem, it's not just some halachic action. So A, it has to be Emmet, every word has to be Emmet, and if not, the post is going to have the censors out, and it's going to have to be that what? That what you're saying, you have to do what? You have to know what you're saying. Now, is that true, halachically, or not? No. Why? I'm saying, let's talk about Esri now. What do I have to know when I say Shemana Esri? First paragraph. You fell right into my trap. No, you... Oh, you're saying for the other. You have a, and let me put it more, more, more serious. You have a chiyuv to say every word with kavana. And the question is, am I allowed to daven knowing that after that first bracha, I'm out to lunch? That's the question. Because that means I am willingly neglecting my chiyuv. Do you hear? So we have gotten used to, like, oh, thank God I had kavana for the first bracha. Bracha shed. No, 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 no. The chiv is for everything. The question is, but the evidence of my yod say. And the question is, can I dive in knowing that I'm going to be so off? So look at the next page. Look at the next page. Okay? This is the Shulchan Aruch. Look what he says. Kufal, Shitzach, Machavim, Bechol, Avrachot, Shiach, Lepal, Bechol, Ashon. This is Kufal to the Shulchan Aruch. Havim, Bechol, Tzarech, Shiachavim, Bechol, Avrachot. You have to have in all of the Brachot. Then, Eni, Yachol, Lechavim, Bechulam. And if you can't account for all of them, Lefachot, Yachavim, Bechol, at least Avo. Okay? So the mission rule, this one to the mission rule is quickly here. Two, three, four, and five of them that I marked off. The Yagla Dalas will have to in the Chatim, at least, besides the first bracha, at least the Chatima, the ending of each bracha. She had had a perush, I mean, just forget about deep philosophical metaphysics. Just get the pshat. Then you want to analyze, feel afterwards, do that. But while you're down, just get the words down. 
How come we both have to say that the Yehudim are not going to be able to say that? How come we both have to say that the Yehudim and the as well? Many people say they have to come under their Achiv there as well. Gimel, Mishavur, which is what I wrote before, but Avo, can you see the Shivcha Shemakom? How can you know the Din Shei as Ponim Vavod Vamachem? That's the Shevach Tashem, you have to have it over there. And then he mentioned, Yes, Toshim Gam, Modim is like Avo, Lachat Fila. Fine. Okay, and now listen to this. Dal in the Mishabura. Ha in a karaha adam nearly can the mitzara din sarah zole palel a kopim niska kodesh mara brachat hashem. So for brach yach zoloma el ke avraham. Well, since you have to go back, Kushana says that you have to go back. And then the Ramah says, well, today we don't go back because our kavan is so lousy. So Mishabura says, if you're still in the middle of that first bracha, go back to the brachat hashem again and pick up from there. Okay, the Ramah says, no. So the halacha is, you, it's indispensable to have gone in the first bracha. You have to. Then the Ramah says, well, we're in there, but today we're a bunch of miskinim today. We can't have kavanas. We don't go back. So the Mishra says, well, if you're in the middle of the first bracha and you caught yourself, just start from bracha Hashem. You already said bracha Hashem. Pick up from there and this time get it right. Okay? Now listen to these bracha halachas. We're just going to pick a few lines here. Six. Have Paul is that? I feel man I'm at Le'il. Say, man, sound safe. Dog, Mrs. Ain't your kavana. Even if your mitzvahs don't need kavana, this is separate. It's not mitzvahs going to have kavana. This is tefillah. Tefillah, you need to have kavana. This is understanding the words that you're saying. There's a separate discussion about before the mitzvah, I have in mind, I want to fulfill the mitzvah of. This is not related to that. Then he goes on. Number seven. Listen to this. He's saying, it seems, that deal from the Shulchan Aruch, that if you know you're only going to go into for the first bracha, and you're not going to go into this, it seems to be... That came and shoe on us, Shaino Yaho, Liyash, Shave that house. Since I, it's hard for me to have Kavana now, that I'm allowed to go and daven. So Mishmur tells us a Chiddush that what? I'm allowed to daven at Bidyeve davening. Because you might think that it's only Bidyeve where you didn't have that Kavana. You can't start off davening not having Kavana for all 19. And what should you do? I don't know. Wait around. Try maybe 20 minutes. Get your focus. He says, no, I, I think there's a good deal from the Shulchan Aruch that what? That even though you know you're not going to come for all of them, but if you know you're going to come for the first one, then you're good to go. Yeah. Okay? And then he says, and listen to this. So the Ramah says, we don't go back anymore. Because we're a bunch of nevers. We don't go back. So he says, What is the case where I finished one esrei, and now what? I'm not going to go back. Because who said I'm going to come any better the second time? And then he says, Kevin the Mitzara Din Lo Yatsa Bazeh. Wait a second. If you have to Tagibor, so what should you do? You're really in no man's land. Why? Because on the one hand, Iker and Din, you have to do what? Go back. On the other hand, Ramas Ramas says, I'm a Nevach. I can't go back. So what should I do? Just sit around and do what? I don't know too much Yiddish, but a little bit I know is Nish to here, Nish to there, which means what? You're not here, you're not there. You can't go back because Ramah says don't go back. You can't continue because, what? Uh, how can I build up floor number two, three, four until 19 when I don't have my first floor? So what do I do? So listen to Behala. So he says, came in the Mitzad in the low Yat Well, you're not Yotz, so how do you go on? So first word, third line under eight. How do you go on and say more brachos? You're missing your base. How do you go on without your base? So he says, What? You don't have, you're not going to have Kavana again if you go back, so then if you just make more Brachos up, what should you do? It seems to me that you're just stuck. And you, you just don't know what to do. It seems to me that you're just stuck. And you just don't know what to do. Aval. Medivir Chaya Adam, Din Bet Mashma, De Eino Choza Fila Omer Itzat HaGibor. No. Even if you have Tzat HaGibor, just continue. Continue. But why? I mean, I'm stuck. For Yotin, you listen to this advice. Tell me if you've ever seen anyone do this. Just wait. Yotin, Margaret of Ram, and you realize you've been in bed. You're physically in the base medrash, but you, you, your head is in bed. And you didn't think about a word you just said. And you catch yourself. What should I do? Ah, here's the advice. Then I feel I'm at the keyboard. So what do you say you should do? Yotin, Allah, shots. Sheyomar. Wait for the chazan, and when he catches up, he's going to say the first bracha, you have in mind what? 
Yeah. Listen to every word. You'll be Yotze from him, and you have Kavana this time as you're listening to him. You okay. Going? What? Do you keep going after that? You and then, that? once you hear my God of Ram, you say, Amen, I got my first Fracha, you go on your own. So you wait in your Shemona Ashray until those... You just wait, Shemona which Shemona. the post can have a big problem with this mission, Absolutely. Brewer, because Absolutely. you're waiting. It's a long time they wait. It's a long time. How long are you allowed to wait? And what if the Chazan says the first Fracha, and he doesn't have any money either? So can you piggyback off a Chazan when he has a pathetic Tefillah? Right? Great question. And what if there's not enough people you need? You That's need another people. issue. The post can do not really follow this. And what they say is, on the next side, they say is, where is it? I put the, here's the last side. Piske Chu is a wonderful safe that brings in a lot of post post Mishavura. And he writes, number 10, he says, if you always have Kavana, and this one time something specific happened, a law went off in the shul, right before you saw Shman Esrei, and just to track, your thoughts were detracted from Shman Esrei. Now you did not you always have Kavana. Just something came up. So he says, then you could go back. Which is a nice svar. Well, there's a rule you can never go back. It's only based on svar. Then you're not going to have kavana if you go back a second time. Even what if that it was? I always have kavana, and something happened, and now I have every reason. The alarm's taken care of. I'm calm. I'm going to have kavana. It's a nice point. I like that. But I want to focus on this. Eleven. He says, finish it off. I'd love to have time to analyze that, but I don't think we do. Aval, number 12. You wait. Okay? And then he says by number 13, okay, We don't do this. What should you do? I'm up to Slachlano. He goes, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I have no clue what I did the last three minutes. So, simple shot is just, I don't know, you're stuck. One advice is, you don't have to run anymore to wait for the Chazik because you're already in the middle of Shemesra. So, Chayadu just says, well, just continue. The Chazoni says, you should be Mahar here. What does Mahara do? I think of the whole Shemun Esrei from the point I, sta- I started till now. This time for the first bracha for sure I'm going to have what? Kavana. And then Hiohor is like I said it. Is that really true or not? Oh my gosh. Exactly. Hiohor, Kadibo Dami, and is a huge machloket, right? Huge. So you're getting yourself into a big mess. Yes? And the fact that you already stopped and you're thinking that I didn't have Kavana from the beginning. I'm saying, why would you assume that you're not going to have Kavana starting all over again? Great question. It's a great question. The Ramah really threw a monkey wrench into this whole discussion here. That's why I like the, the point that Piscuit you made. That, you know, if you always have fun, just a one-time thing. Okay, but it's tricky. The Ramah says that people just hard to have Kavana, and therefore he made this general rule, which is not simple, but that's what he said. And we more or less follow. Well, okay? Also, yes? Well, why, why would you go, if you finish already, why would you go back when you could just, can't you just listen to the... Uh, the shots. Wow, what a sugya. It's an amazing sugya. When can you listen to the Chazan? And it could be that maybe in this case you could listen to the Chazan. Maybe we have another chance to learn it another time. We can analyze the sugya about listening to the Chazan, when you can listen, when not. Okay? And there are times you are allowed to listen, even though you're a Bucky. And he, but let's say you could do that here. That's an advice. It can't hurt, that's for sure. Right. But uh, it means you have a Kavana as you listen to the first bracha. And also means that hopefully he's going to have kavana, or you're relying on shittas that say that a chazan that doesn't know what he's saying, it's still considered a tefillah anyway. Right, and the right. rules of kavana for the first bracha somehow don't apply to it. Right. Either way, you're going to have a problem because according to some shittas, if you do it, if you go you back yourself, you might not have kavana, you might not be able to do it. Exactly. So Ramaz says not to go. So you're right. In this case, when you finish, you listen know. to the chazan right. for sure. Okay? Yes? Is there a shita that says you should go back? That's a Simple shot of the Gemara shown him is that way, but the Ramah came along and said, talk to Rosh Hashiva if, if he has any advice in this area. I'll tell you my advice, okay? My Kavana, I wish it was decent. It's really not. I wish it was better and I work on it, okay? I read this beautiful Svarman Tfila. You have Otsa Tfila, you guys should read that. Rav Schwaman Tfila is gorgeous. There's a lot of beautiful Svarman Tfila. Whatever's going to help, you read Art School, the translate, whatever works, you should do. But I'll tell you, the first bracha, I never miss. Even though my kavana is not where it should be. And it's so simple, why? Once you look at the sugya, and you realize that if you don't kavana in the middle of the first bracha, you finish the first bracha, right? 
Well, Mishmur says just wait there, which is not simple at all because A, they might need you for the minion. B, the waiting that long, is that simple halachically? Not simple. Post can challenge him on that. Is the cousin going to have proper kavana? And can I piggyback back off of his tefillah of his on a proper kavana? So again, a lot of problems with that. Okay, so I'm in the Lord's monastery now. So Chazoni says, oh, I'm in the, by the first prophet now. Am I getting from? So Chazoni says, what's the idea? What should I do? He or her. Because some say that he or her is Kadib. Okay, that's some say. Okay, then if I finish my answer, well, I can't be my It's over already. Then Mishra's advice doesn't help anymore. So yeah, maybe I should listen to the Chazim, which gets into that whole question. Am I going to really listen to the whole Chazim from the end? Am I going to have proper Kavana? Is he going to have Kavana? Whatever I do, I'm stuck, right? So once you understand the sugya, that tefillah is like no other mitzvah. You're talking to Hashem, and the kavana is essential to indispensable. So then what you do is very simple. If you realize your tefillah, you are not going to fulfill your obligation. I'm not ready to say your tefillah will be bracha v'atala, because if you look closely at the bracha v'atala, he kept saying, you didn't put it for the first bracha. How do you go on and keep saying more bracha that what? He didn't say bracha v'atala. What did he say? Have more bracha that what? You won't be Yotze. He should have come in with a with a stronger li- uh, line and say, "How do you say bracha, which are going to be what?" Vatol. He didn't say it. So let's assume it's not vatol. But you didn't fulfill your mitzvah. You're not fulfilling your mitzvah. So when I go Shachem, I want to fulfill my mitzvah. I'm not looking just to daven and have something which is not vatol. I'd like to have more than that, and so would you. So it's so simple the patent. I will not say the, there's a whole bunch of this 20 phrases in the first bracha, 10, 50, whatever many phrases there are. I will not say a phrase until what? Until I think, what does that word mean? Okay, Baruch HaTashem, you are the source of all blessing in the universe. Baruch HaTashem. Okay, what's the next phrase? You have a special relationship with Kalei Yisrael, special Ashkoch with Kalei Yisrael, and Ashkoch started back when? Forefathers. Okay, we're saying And if I'm busy with a million things and this and that, and I'm not thinking, I'm just not going to go on. Until I get my thoughts back. It might be 20 seconds. I'll get, oh, okay. I look at Abraham. Okay, it's not Abraham. Okay, you had a special relationship with Abraham. He had a relationship with you. And, and he has own, and you said his own relationship. And you had a special relationship with each one of them. In your own special, meaningful way. Ah, I look at Abraham. Okay, Abraham. Okay, great. Now, the next phrase. And you're going to learn the tefillahs. You're going to study that first bracha, especially halavai by all of it, but at least that first bracha, you're going to learn each phrase. And you will never say the next phrase until what? You consciously, rationally thought, what do these words mean? And only then will you say it. And it might be that the first bracha will take you a minute or two minutes, and then the master's might take you a whole minute. Whatever you do with that, that's a separate discussion. But at least let's get the basics. And if you realize that how serious this sugi is, that tefillah is not like any other tefillah, like any other mitzvah. You're talking with Hashem, which means that it has to be emet, as we learn from all those examples. And the more you guys see in different posts come over the years, you'll see, whoa, this idea just keeps growing and growing. You will see hundreds as you go through your lives. That the emet and tefillah is just crucial. And then he says, talk dialogue with Hashem, I need to know what I'm saying in my dialogue. And once it's so real to you, and so halachically clear, Halavai by all 19, but at least by the first one, yours, that's it. This is the patent. Danny Myers has a simple advice. Not simple until it's carrying, yeah, it might take some time, but it makes such sense. Just do it. You, th- you formulate the idea, then you say the words. Formulate the idea, you say the words, until you finish, am I going to have Does that make sense? Yep. It makes perfect sense. And it works. You just, just got to get used to that framework that I will not say that phrase until I have that words in my mind. So those are some of the ideas I want to share about feeling with you. If you have any questions, if you have any, see if I can deal yeah. with them, yes? What was the question that he said we should have asked? Oh, that? the question was, why are the post game they're in the Wild West over here when it comes to Tefillah? I'll take this out, change that. What's going on? Low plug! Allah depends on low plug! Without low plug, Allah falls apart! Yes, that was the question. The answer is low plug, Ad Khan, until the text of Tefillah. When it comes to the text of Tefillah, you can't say Sheker. You can't, because Tefillah you're talking to God. That's not like any other mitzvah. Do you hear? Yes. Any other questions? It's been an absolute pleasure to be back. My well, much a treat for me. And uh, continue. I hear such beautiful things about these years. Just continue to grow and steig and develop. And then Yitzhak Hashem will meet again. That's a lot of